Hi, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Sanna, and you have landed on my perfume channel. Today, let's talk about fall, autumn fragrances for men. So, if that sounds like something you would be interested in, please keep on watching. Let's start with the favorite, and it's by Van Cleef and Alfels Orchid Leather. To my nose, it's a smoky plum with very balmy leather, cinnamon, cardamom. There's incense, there's smoke. The vibe it creates, it's attractive, very alluring. Categorized as amber spicy, it almost leans gourmand, but just stays in the right balance, you know, it's not too sweet. The vanilla here is dark. The leather here is smooth and balmy, and the spices will not overwhelm you. And I think it's important to note here that the perfumer is Julien Raskinet. I personally really love it, and if you're into ambery, spicy scents, gourmand scents, you love dark vanilla, smoky and incensey scents, you should definitely check it out. The lasting power is around 7 hours of Orchid Leather by Van Cleef and Arfels. The next perfume is for those guys who enjoy tobacco scents, and in my opinion, this is one of the best tobacco scents out there. Theodorus Calotinis, Tobacco Maniac. The tobacco here is the cigar type, opulent, royal feel. The vanilla here rounds this tobacco out beautifully. A high quality blend from a niche in the house based in Greece. The tobacco leaf with labdanum, patchouli, vanilla. The patchouli here has a dry cocoa nuance. In its essence, Tobacco Maniac has this grounding, a bit introspective, earthy vibe. So Tobacco Maniac by Theodorus Kalotinis. The next fragrance is Anima Dulcis by Arkist. In this charming bottle, minimalistic chic. It's so heavy, actually. One of the latest additions to my scent wardrobe, so I'm still kind of playing around with it. It's a very spicy, almost savory blend with paprika, chili peppers. I sometimes get a curry accord, something like turmeric even. I was intrigued by the backstory. It's inspired by Mexican culture, reminiscent of Mexican hot chocolate. The chocolate is prominent here, but it's more like a dry cocoa, you know? The creators have described Anima Dulcis as Barocco Gourmand. Interesting thing about this one, I get something like bronzy copper accord, but just ever so slightly. Yeah, just by looking at the notes, you would never have guessed how it really smells. It's a complex one and definitely needs to be tested on skin to see how it works for you. Important thing to note here, it's animalic. There's cumin. In this case, I think it adds that extra depth. So, Anima Dulcis by Arkist. Next up is Ecran de Fumé by Sergio Tanz. And yeah, and I bought it only two months ago and look at this dent. I have been wearing this together with my partner. Essentially, it's a boozy dark chocolate with sandalwood spices. I also smell tonka beans here, which adds a nutty element. Depending on the weather, a cherry note can pop up. Maybe it's just my nose, but I thought I will mention it anyways. Warm, cozy, but as with all Christopher Sheldrake's creations, there's a dash of melancholy in it. And probably that's why I love it so much as well. So if you're looking for a cozy perfume for fall, autumn evenings, this is a nice option. So, Ecran de Fumé by Sejultans. Next up is Gzezhov Tony Ayomi Monkey Special. Attention grabbing scent. A fruity leather with earthy patchouli. And everything has been drizzled with hot caramel and passion fruit. The passion fruit here is a bit sour, very juicy, and um, exotic, even. Very well rounded. The leather used in here is a bit brutal, but still it's a very variable scent. In my opinion, it's more suited for evening wear. Uh, at least it requires you dressing up. 
So Tony Ayomi, Monkey Special by Xerjov. Next up is an OG, Memo Paris African Leather. My bottle is like 100 years old. But there's something still left. What can I say about African leather that hasn't been said already? It's just a very fierce scent. Confidence booster, attention grabbing blend. There's cumin, cardamom, vetiver, musk, lots of ambers, resins. The spices here feel a bit dry, so African leather makes me think of a desert. I can see this one on a digital nomad who loves to travel on daily basis. So African leather by Memo Paris, a cold following and almost like a classic. All right, the next one is Oud for Greatness by Inicio. And this is a superb option if you like very loud, proud, brutal, dominant scents. It's expensive, but Oud for Greatness somehow smells like money. Freshly printed dollar bills with saffron, synthetic oud, uh, lots of fresh spices. There's also leather and musk. Wood for greatness is a very molecular scent. Um, there's a lot of ambroxan, in my opinion, or iso super, because it's so highly projecting um, just with one spray. Uh, my only suggestion would be to go easy on sprayer to not be down the people around you. It's a compliment magnet. It's a very recognizable scent, memorable. Once you smell it, you will be able to pick the scent up in a room full of people. If you're in a restaurant, let's say, or in, in a club, and someone is very good for greatness, you will definitely smell that person and uh, the scent trail. It's good for greatness by Inicio. Another one I totally stand by is Intense Cafe by Montal an OG favorite. It's a jammy rose with bitter cold coffee and lots of musk. It's jammy, it's dense, it's potent. Scent trail for miles. I would suggest it as a going out scent and a great material for dinner dates. Don't be afraid of the rose here. Intense Café by Montal will be appreciated by those men who love gourmand fragrances. Mm, I love it. It's intriguing, sensual, perfect for autumn, fall season. So intense cafe by Montal. Next up is Santal Dancha by Armani Privé. It's their exclusive line. And to me, it's a very fresh, spicy sandalwood with cedar, cardamom. Mm, there's a touch of bergamot as well. What surprised me about this scent was the longevity. It lasted 8 plus hours with a huge projection. There's lots of air in Sandal Dansha. It feels voluminous, spacey. I love the fresh, upbeat energy in it. There's also resins, violet leaf and lots of ambroxan. But you know, ambroxan provides this projection, this central, this power. If you like Le Labo Santal 33, and also Santal Blanc by Van Cleef and Arpels, you might really like this one as well. So Santal Dancha by Armani Privé. A little book and I have the 50 ml size bottle of Marquise de Sade. Histoire de Parfum, 1740. I love when niche brands create these travel size, smaller size bottles, because when you have a large collection of fragrances, mm, you don't need a hundred mil size bottles anymore. It will be almost impossible to use them all up within this lifetime. Categorized as Amber Woody, it's a blend of multi-layered notes that somehow come together in a perfect harmony. It opens up with bergamot, davana, artemisia, followed by an earthy patchouli, coriander and cardamom. And in the base you will be met with labdanum, cedar, elemi and patchouli. Immortel here adds a dry, hay-like texture with reminiscent of tobacco with honey. To my nose, the leading player is the labdanum with leather, it's also birch. I would also call it a bit smoky and balsamic. 
So you see, it's such a complex scent and definitely needs to be tested on your skin, not blind by safe. If you like labdanum, resins, leathery scents with a dark vibe, definitely check it out. So, Histoire de Parfum, 1740, Marquise de Sade. So this was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will also do a part two with an affordable option, so stay tuned for that. And I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment. And yeah, see you on my next one. Bye.